Hello, I'm Peachy. What do you get if you mix Egyptians with angry space robots? That's right, angry Egyptian space robots. Why are Necrons so angry? Because their intelligence is artificial. <laughs> dad jokes. Come here for the dad jokes, stay for the painting. Welcome to the painting phase. This is part two of a three-part Shadow Vault series where we'll be taking you through how to paint the Necrons. Now today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different from the Necrons than I normally do in our videos. First of all, I'm going to take them up to a point where they're just generic looking Necrons ready for the tabletop. So th this point is mainly with silver with some greeny glows and stuff like that. And then after that you can decide where you go with them. Pick any dynasty or whatever or just leave them as is. After that I'm then going to take them up to the next level which is to pick a dynasty and pick my favourite which is the Nylak dynasty, just because I made it back in the day and it looks sexy. So I'm gonna paint that as well. And then after that, we're then gonna take them up to the higher steps, if you like, where we do some highlighting, pick out some details and do a little bit more with the blades as well. Now, if you haven't already seen it, our other video, the first part is up here and that's showing you how to paint those Kazakhin, or as we did, Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. Now I'm gonna try and use as many paints from that video as we possibly can. It's only gonna be a handful of vulture because the neck ones are slightly different, but every little helps to keep that cost down. Now, as always, what I'm going to be doing is undercoating the models with a rattle can. Now, this always helps speed things along because it gets the majority of the colour done. Now, I'm going to be using lead belcher here. If you don't have lead belcher, use any good metal colour from any of the spray company that you've got. And if you don't have the right kind of metal colour, just spray black or grey or whatever you have, and then just base coat them with iron hand steel. That'll work just as well. Our first step here is to apply Norn Oil all over our Necron. No need to be super neat here, just drench that model in shade. With our shade dry, we shall now dry brush over our Necron with Iron Hand Steel. This is a subtle highlight, just to help give some definition. <laughs> Next, we're gonna pick out any black details using Black Legion. This will mostly be the weapons, but there's some cables underneath their chest as well, so pick those out too. Also apply a thin coat of this to any scenery details on the base for a dark metallic effect. I'll just mix it 50-50 with water. Using a white paint of your choice, here I'm using Prerocryl's Bold Titanium White, we shall pick out any details we want to give a glowing effect to, such as the eyes and energy parts of the weapons. Again, you might want to apply a couple of coats when doing blades. To give our Necron guns a bit more of an energy glow, I'm going to heavily thin down white and drop that around any energy base recesses. Don't worry, if this gets onto the gun, we can tidy that up later. Then using Black Legion, we can tidy up any mishaps. Now I should be applying Striking Scorpion Green to those white details to give our energy weapons that classic Necron green glow. In some places, you could add a second coat, such as the cables, just for a little bit more depth. Now for some nice transitions on your blades and your cables, you could spend hours wet blending or even glazing, or you could use the most valuable tool any hobbyist could ever have, and it's free. Your finger. Dead easy. So after applying the second coat, whilst it's still wet, I'm just gonna get my finger and just rub across those cables and blades, and as you can see, it gives it a nice blend. So at this point, you can leave your models as is, and they're very reminiscent of the old third edition Codex cover. So just play games and have fun, get them based, use whatever base you want. However, what I'm gonna now do is move on to the next part, which is to add a color of a dynasty. Now, there's a few choices you can go with because you've gone for green energy glows. It could be Saltec or Novak, or one of the many other ones in the book. I'm gonna be going for Nylac, but you can always swap out those contrasts for like oranges or blues, and that will cover like Mephrit or thocked, so it's entirely up to you where you go from here. Now, with the Nylac Dynasty, there's a little thing I did when I designed this back in the day, which was the more elite they are, there's more gold on the model, 
and then like the rank and file like immortals etc lich guard they get more turquoise on them so you'll see that scattered across this painting guide where some of the models like the immortals will have more turquoise and then the character and then a little bit more gold so let's get to it so for all our gold details we're going to pick these out with retributor armor which will include faces details and parts on the weaponry And for our turquoise details, we're going to apply this to our rank and file warriors like the Immortal. Most on shoulder pads, helms, faces, death masks, whatever you want to call them. And also don't forget your little plasma sights as well. I'm just going to pick out some of the body work on those too. After picking out the turquoise details on the troops, we're just going to embellish them with a little bit of gold. It's far easier to do it at this point than try and work around the gold details whilst painting the turquoise. With the gold and turquoise picked out, we will coat over these in Agrap Surshade. You could add this to the weapons to add some age and corrosion to the metals as well. However, avoid the silver bodywork or skeleton if you like. We want to keep that silver. So if our Necrons now paint up to a tabletop standard, what we're now going to do is we're going to get them based so we can start playing games with them. We're going to copy the basin that we did in that Kazakin painting guide as well, just so it matches it nicely. I'm applying this all over the base, and as it gets nearer things like the feet or other details, I like to add a bit of water as it makes it a little runny. It means it's more workable around those details, so less splodges on those feet. Now I'm going to coat over the texture with Gunman Flesh. I'm going to be thinning this down with water with a 50-50 mix. Now I'm going to gently dry brush the texture using Rakar Flesh. Again, just slowly build this up and it'll give it a nice subtle effect. You can also add it to the feet if you want to, to make them look a bit dusty. That's up to you. And last for the base, I'm going to apply three thin coats of Steel Legion Drought to the base rim. This will give it a nice smooth finish. And again here, we're just using Army Painter Tufts. With our Nihilite Dynasty kill team now based, it's ready for games on the tabletop. Ready to blast and kill some Ultramarines. <laughs> and that's all they deserve. Now, if you're enjoying this channel, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We also have a Patreon as well. All these things help to support our channel, keep us fueled in tea and biscuits, and more shade being thrown at Ultramarines too. So the next step now is to take our Necron kill team up to the next level by adding some highlights and do some extra magic to those blades as well. Space magic, I think, is probably a more appropriate term. Make them glowy, make them look cool, make them look energy-based. For our first extra detail, we should tidy up and pick out some turquoise markings on that gold. This could be a stripe down the helm or thinned and dropped into details like on the Despotec around his collar. He's got a little bit of blue filigree underneath where that gold is. Now I'll pick out any gold markings over those turquoise details. This could be stripes again down the helm or a key line on the shoulder pads. When doing the key line, just take your time. If you do make any splodges or it gets a bit thick, just tidy back up with that base coat. And the important thing here is to only do what you're comfortable doing. Again, you can make mistakes. Don't worry about it. Mistakes can always be fixed with painting. Now we're going to add some highlights to our metallics on both the gold and the silver. For this, we're going to be using Vallejo Chrome Model Air. This is actually a new paint for me, and I'm so used to using Citadel silvers and metallics, I'm actually really enjoying using this. So yeah, a top silver in my books. And if you don't have this, just use Stormo Silver, because that's what I was originally used anyway. But Pat lent me this. He's so nice. <laughs>
Using striking scorpion green neat for the part, we shall begin adding some extra definition to our blades. What we're trying to do here is treat the sections a bit like a checkered pattern. So where you might find a light tone, you'll have a dark tone sitting next to it. Make sure to use the contours and sections to your advantage like I'm doing here. Now using warp lightning neat from the pot, we should begin adding some darker definition to those sections. I'll usually start quite neat from the top, and then as I work down that section, it gets a bit more lighter, kind of gives it a bit of a blend. With those sections done, we're now gonna highlight the edges using bold titanium white. Where possible, try and use the edge in your brush for a nice consistent line. Also at this point, Use the white to add some more punch to your other glowy bits, such as like the eyes, as well as those sections on the guns. Now we should knock back those white highlights and bring them back into the green spectrum by applying a glaze. Now all we're gonna do here is thin striking scorpion green down to a glaze consistency, so like the thickness of milk as opposed to water, and then neatly layer that over the green details. And I say layer, we're not like douse it like you would a wash, you just take your time, layer over, and that gives it a nice tonal shift. It's important also to not have too much on your brush. So just load up your brush, and if you're worried, just dab a little bit off onto some paper towel, because you can always add more if you need to. There we are, our kill team is now highlighted, and I think they look pretty smart as well. So it's just simple things like that, picking the odd highlight here, and they'd have to highlight everything, but it looks great. Also, if you picked a different dynasty, you just need to pick relevant highlights for those guys as well. Now we have a whole bunch of links in the description. Everything we've used here can be bought from our affiliate links, which you can see below. We also have a list of paints, so if you can follow along, you can just see what paints we used, and it makes it, it makes it nice and easy shopping list for you. That's what it does. We also have a Patreon. Now, this is the important part. This does really help supporters. It keeps the lights on, keeps us fueling tea. I know I've mentioned this before, but it really does. Uh, we have loads of benefits, so you can have polling rights, talk to us on Discord, ask for feedback, just general chit chat. We also have some feedback, tears, and of course, one-to-one -one tuition with me as well. Well, it's been a blast, or a gauss blast. It's been a gauss blast, I've enjoyed it. Farewell, enjoy painting, happy hobby. Ang, ang, zero, one, 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 zero. Ang, 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 ang. Don't judge me, that was a dad joke in Necron. <laughs>